start the last session of CIUK with uh, GIS. So uh, the author is uh, Guillermo Rico, and he will talk about a QGIS plugin to explore landscape connectivity. So. Yeah. Hi, I'm going, my name is Guillermo and I'm going to present my research on at least cost path networks and circuit theory to explore landscape connectivity. So this is the index of my presentation. After introducing the topic, I'm going to give a little bit of background on landscape studies in archaeology and then I'm going to present the case study which has been the basis of, of my research as well as the discussion. So the study of landscape and mobility is one of the key elements in archaeological studies. The approaches taken by researchers towards mobility have developed over the years, as well as their role in understanding the landscape. Early studies highlighted the limitation of archaeological accounts of mobility, even in the GIS-based analysis, but its development has allowed the creation of procedures to approach these questions from very different perspectives. Human mobility studies need to consider all the elements that have shaped a territory, joining all the information to enrich the discourse. The complexity of these elements restricts the creation of new approaches, which has led to the emergence of this cost path as the standard to predict ancient pro mobility paths. However, this analysis is not exempt from limitations and has become a bottom passion routine that is not uh, that has uh, many many kindred uh, in the ecological record. I will propose integration of circuit theory as a different approach towards landscape mobility in archaeology. From an analysis on a real case, uh, I've created a QGIS plugin that can allow the user to perform least cost path analysis and circuit theoretical models to study mobility in archaeological landscapes. So these are my research questions. I have, uh, so from a case study previously analyzed with least cost path, I have performed uh, circuit theory modeling analysis. And I have uh, checked the differences in order to know how circuit theory can benefit archaeological studies. And in order to know, get to understand the differences between both approaches, as well as to see if it is possible to regard both techniques as complementary. So a little bit of background now. The use of GIS refers to an abstract space. The synthetic view of the landscape may be a handicap for understanding the way in which an individual can experience his surroundings. As the sp space still acts as an active agent that has meaning and connotations to the actions of the individual. Criticism to GIS says it's too deterministic and rejected. It is even sometimes considered as a routine and its accessibility <coughs> has incremented their, their abuse in some cases, which leads to some users applying GIS techniques without understanding the theoretical underpinnings or the formulas behind these uh, systems. So this can lead to an inappropriate use, which may make even some users do not identify the level of bias and the degree of uncertainty on the results. So perspective is the core of landscape ecology. <coughs> some archaeologists suggest presenting a larger landscape to approximate the perspective of an individual moving through a landscape. In order to do so, uh, most of these studies rely on GM and slope value calculation, as well as the representations of landscape features. Uh, as a consequence, from these elements, the standard technique is least cost path. This has become uh, the main, uh, the main uh, method to reconstruct historical and natural paths in archaeology between two or more points. From, for example, this little case I created here. From two points in the landscape, this cost path provides you the optimal route between the origin and the destination. So, uh, moreover, in, in most of these studies, in order to know the natural route that traverse the study area, researchers determined that the creation of a border around the study area, outside the study area, would allow to uh, know where the natural corridors were located in the area, performing uh, least cost path networks between all uh, the pairs of the set of points. Uh, this allows to check the distance between the sites and the natural corridors in the area. 
Many studies apply this technique in different ways. However, this is not exempt of limitations, as I said. The impossibility of generating multiple paths between po two points uh, is one of the main issues, because least cost path models are restricted to the existence of an optimal path. It assumes that people optimize its costs and has a previous knowledge on the territory, as well as a preference towards a single specific route. Moreover, considering the gaps in archaeological data, which make us unaware of multiple factors, the inclusion of uh, multiple pathways in our studies could provide extra information. So, circuit theory. Uh, acknowledging the limitations of least cost path, uh, men, uh, some various ecologists applied circuit theory models to study landscape mobility with successful results. Circuit theory regards landscape features as conductors of movement, which restrict and motivate movement at the same time. So that means that all points in the landscape have a value, a value of connectivity. First to the principles of graph theory and network theory, it is possible to depict a slope raster, as we have on the screen, as a set of nodes connected by edges. The edge depicts the flux of movement between two points or nodes. The strength of the connection is the weight of the edge. So, circuit theory regards these nodes representing points in the landscape and these edges representing resistors. So, these resistors have the resistance values that will define the current or connectivity among the nodes. The connection between the nodes, some of which are sites in the landscape, will depend on the effective resistance or resistance distance, which works as a measure of isolation of the ecological settlement. Thanks to network theory, it is possible to quantify the connectivity between the nodes due to the presence of various paths. The key point is the incorporation of multiple pathways between the nodes. As, as more pathways are attached to a site, the isolation of that particular site decreases. And moreover, thanks to random walk theory, it is possible to consider that a point in, in the landscape can be visited more than once. Okay, for this study, the, I have used Circuitscape, which is also included in the, in the tool. Circuitscape is an open source software created by the researchers who identified the benefits of circuit theory to model connectivity. Uh, it reads raster grids. Raster grids have a value for each feature in the landscape uh, related, uh, regarding the permeability, permeability sorry, of each element. And the edge connections between the cells are conceived as resistors whose uh, value corresponds to the mean of the cell value and its neighbors. And again, the perspective is important because the availability of multiple paths uh, is closer to the experience of an individual traversing a landscape. So the, this is the case study I worked with. This is uh, in the north uh, east of the Iberian Peninsula. It's of the settlement or in, in during the Late Bronze Age and the Early Iron Age. This case study was previously analyzed with Lisco path, whose results I have compared. So from basic spatial uh, variables and visibility, accessibility, and distance to the natural routes, the, cha the changes in the settlement location dynamics uh, were analyzed in order to check if the integration of this region in the Mediterranean trade routes in the area of an age uh, implied a change in the location of the settlements. Okay, methodology. First of all, it was one of the key points of the project was the creation of this toolbox, landscape mobility toolbox, which is accessible from the QGIS processing toolbox. This toolbox enables a user to uh, perform least cost path networks and also to do uh, to study uh, the landscape according to circuit theoretical models based on circuitscape's algorithm. As we can see, all the modeling modes available in the landscape. Uh, as for my study, uh, the least cost path applies uh, the sorry for the pronunciation, to find the shortest path between two points, two nodes in a network, uh, taking direction into account. After that, the tool. It is also important to mention that the tool uh, eases the implementation of these models in archaeology because the formats required by Circuitscape can hinder its use between people who are not completely familiar with GIS. So the tool adapts the, the data and transfers that data directly to the algorithm. 
So the mm, modeling type for my study was pairwise because of its similarity to least cost paths. Uh, pairwise takes into account a set of nodes, a set of points in the landscape, which uh, between um, and it takes uh, each pair of points of this set. So between each pair, connectivity is modeled, uh, tran transferring current between uh, through, sorry each cell of the landscape, and all the current after being transferred to each cell of the landscape to the destination point, it is set safe in a current map. So each pair of nodes has its own current map, and all the current maps really um, from each pair uh, are merged into a cumulative current map, which depicts the connectivity of the entire landscape. So just a quick mention, these are the points I used for my study, both for the loose cost path analysis and for the circuit theory model. Uh, it's a set of 26 points located every 10 kilometers and, look, and placed uh, 25 kilometers uh, far from the outer settlements of the sites I mentioned before, in order to avoid any uh, border effects. So these are the results, loose cost path network, as we can see in the in the first two, in the after two pictures, the uh, the set settlement in the left side of the of the river of the Llobrega River, which is the one separating both groups. Uh, on the left hand side, we can see that uh, sites were always located in near the natural corridors in the area, whereas in the right side, uh, sites clustered around the main corridor. Uh, the same uh, can be spotted, <coughs> sorry, in the circuit theory output where uh, the higher connectivity areas are always where the left sites are located and they and in the right side the sites cluster around this place in the in the area range so yeah uh, this is confirmed by the density plots and the of test sorry uh, which uh, will allow us to to see that sites in the left side were always clustered around the main corridors and then uh, in the right bank, the distance to natural corridor corridors played a key role in the resettlement and new sites clustered around those corridors, as well as in the circuit theory results, which it is also important to mention that this bimodal distribution on the left side provides an extra difference because in the previous plot, all the sites look like the same. Uh, However, moreover, the difference in, in the right side becomes even more evident since uh, sites moved to the areas where the current flow is more significant, so the connectivity was higher. However, it is also necessary to note that those sites, um, uh, in the sites in the right side do not reach the same level of connectivity as the left side because of the amasif near the coast. So that provides an extra information which we would have lost with this cost path, since this circuit theory includes all the elements at different scales in the landscape. So in order to check, just a quick mention, in order to check if uh, connectivity increases or decreases uh, from with using uh, both approaches, uh, I created a little ranking to check if, uh, if uh, were, there were differences in time and in the different banks of the river. And it was possible to see that the left bank increases the connectivity, whereas the left right bank uh, decreases the connectivity, depending on which method we use. So finally, considering that large territories have several features that exert influence on movement at different scales, analyzing the location of the sites exclusively according to the network of optimal paths or natural corridors can lead to incomplete interpretations. Other features are also determining for particular sites at a smaller scale. Although many people try, have tried to improve least cost path, circuitscape stands out for incorporating the probability that a random walker can move through each cell. One could think that considering that both approaches are measures of connectivity and both approaches use, use the same data, current, current flow, so connectivity should decrease as distance to natural corridors uh, escalate. However, we've seen that this is not like that. So there is not such a direct relation between variables. This implies that the isolation of the settlements does not depend exclusively on the site, on the distance, sorry, to the natural route. So this could change the interpretation on some particular settlements. This could say, uh, change the interpretation on if a site is connected or is, has a higher level of mobility or not. So as we've seen, both approaches provide different information of the landscape. 
and the use of both approaches as complementary would enrich the discourse and provide additional information to our interpretations. And, yeah.